Welcome everyone to another week of Cross Trainers. I'm so glad that you could join us. My name is Antone and this here with me is... I'm Ariel. <laughs> so this week we are going to get into another topic of discipline. But let's first try and remember what we learned about last week. Ariel, can you tell us, just remind us again, how did you share around discipline last week? Last week we spoke about discipline in our thoughts. So that's about changing the things around us so that we can have good thoughts and be people who act differently because of what we think. So um, what will we, we be talking about this week? This week, we're going to talk about making decisions and being disciplined in that so that we make decisions in the way that God wants us to. Yeah. And we make so many decisions every day from tiny decisions like what we're going to have for breakfast. <laughs> but for me, that's big <laughs> to big decisions like um, who are we going to choose to be our friends? So we'll get into that just now. But first, it's time for our game. Today's game is called Treasure Hunt. A picture will pop up on the screen and will give you a few clues on how to find the hats that are hidden all over this picture. So let's get into today's game. Here are some clues to help you find the hats. Clue number one. You'll find it where you put down your cup of tea. Clue number two. You use this to find your way around. On it, you'll also find a hat. Clue number three. Don't forget to water your plants. You might also find a hat near one of them. Clue number four. It goes oink oink and you put your coins in it. This one is wearing a hat. Clue number five. This one goes tick tock. If it rings, the hat might fall off. Clue number six. Turn this on for a bit more light and behind it, you might find a hat. Good luck. Wasn't that fun? I love playing games. Um, another thing that is super fun is worshiping God. But we have to remember that as, although it's fun, it is a moment for us to just focus on God and remember that worship is not just fun, it's praising God and remembering who He is. Absolutely. And this week's song is linked a little bit to what we learned last week and what we're going to learn about this week. It's all about God's truth and living in His truth. So let's sing together and praise God.
Hey guys, Pastor Richard here, doing one of the things I love the most, riding my bicycle. It's about 6 o'clock on Wednesday morning and we've been up riding since just after 4. Many, many people think, man, that's crazy, why do you guys get up at 4 o'clock to ride a bike? Well, one of the things cycling coaches have been saying for years now is that the way to get faster and fitter and stronger is simply to spend more time in the saddle. What that means is consistency. So just getting up and getting on your bike day after day and just turning the pedals. It doesn't have to be big rides, it doesn't have to be fast or hard. Just showing up every day and doing more and more longer. That's what's going to make you a faster and stronger cyclist. In the same way, if you want to grow spiritually stronger, well, it's really just the same thing. Simply showing up every day, day after day, spending time in the Word. Consistency is the key. It doesn't have to be very long. It doesn't have to be very intense. Not every time that you spend praying or reading the Bible will feel amazing. Sometimes it really will. You'll very much feel the presence of God feel like he's talking to you directly but sometimes it won't feel like that but you'll still be growing spiritually stronger if you simply show up every day spending time in the word consistency is the key you will grow spiritually stronger cool. wasn't that awesome to just to see in everyday life how we need discipline but now let's take a moment to just pause and breathe. So make sure you sit up, sitting comfortably and let's take a look what we're going to be thinking about today. The Bible tells us that we can give all our worries to God because He cares for us. What are some of the worries that you've had this week? While you breathe, think about it and then say this out loud or just quietly in your heart. Lord Jesus, I give you this worry because I know that you care for me. And remember, you can do this whenever you are worried about anything, not just on a Sunday. Let me pray for you. Jesus, thank you so much for every single child watching this today. I pray that you will help them to know that they can give their worries to you, whatever it is, big or small, because you care so much for them. Help all of us to know that Jesus, you are the King over everything. You are in control over everything. So we don't have to be afraid because we know that you are mighty and strong and big and you can do anything and you love us. Help us to really hear what you want to teach us in today's lesson. Amen. 
Our scripture reading for this week is Ephesians 5, verses 1 to 17. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it says, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Good morning. So glad that you guys have joined. I'm assuming it's morning. Maybe it's night. Anyway, nice to see you anyway. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is David. Uh, I think maybe Anthony just said that. And uh, well, I'm here this morning as Coach Dave uh, to be part of your Cross Trainer program. This Cross Trainer, I, I was like, that's actually quite a good name. Cross, like Jesus's cross, but also Cross Trainer, learning new disciplines and so on. So, so far we've looked at a few disciplines, right? We've looked at how to look after money, our time uh, and media. And today, I want to talk a little bit more around something which is harder to see, but that's our will, how we make decisions in life, how we control our life. So perhaps the first question to you guys is, do you think you are actually in control of your own life, your own destiny? You might, some, some of you, I don't know if you're listening with your parents, but maybe they should uh, go and make some tea or something. But some parents are like, you can do anything, my child. You can be a doctor, fly an airplane, whatever it is. Others will say, you are not allowed to do that, you're not allowed to do this, always got to do this, and they try and control you, right? Well, in either case, <laughs> at some stage, you're going to get out of home and you're going to make your own decisions. But even now, you are already starting to make your own decisions in life as to whether, well, number one, am I going to obey my parents or not? <laughs> Um, but uh, also like the small things in life that you get to manage. Some of it might be, well, what subjects I'm going to choose at school when you get into high school uh, or whether I'm going to hang out with those friends. So let's talk a little bit about how do we make decisions? How do we make good decisions? How, how does God help us to make good decisions? So the first thing is, is it uh, always something that is right or wrong? Well, Sometimes, and we'll see from the Bible verses, sometimes there are rights and wrongs, but sometimes it's not quite as clear as that. So typically, when it's not very clear, people have different methods that they apply. Some make lists of pros and cons, uh, you know, the good things about something or the principle, and they try and work out what is the right answer or to be the optimum uh, direction to take. Well, that's good. That's a helpful strategy. Some people ask opinions of other people. Maybe you ask your parents, maybe you ask your friends, like what would you do in this situation? Or, or you worry about what other people think of you if you make this decision or do this particular thing. All of those might help you to make the decision. Sometimes we just kind of stuck and go, I don't know what to do. <laughs> maybe flicking a coin, you know? <laughs> choosing on, on luck. And, and some of these decisions are small. Some of them might direct our lives. I'm reminded of a story of Trevor Noah. You know that comedian? He's now in America, does The Daily Show and so on. Do you know that he actually used to come to Rosebank Union? Do you know he actually used to come to KBS 
right here at this church? Well, he did. Actually, his mum, his mother, Patricia, uh, used to come. Uh, and he, t- he talks in his book, uh, Born a Crime, of uh, when he was a small kid. Apparently, he was quite naughty. And he's telling this story himself. And he says how when he was naughty and so on, his mom used to discipline him, wanted to um, punish him. And what he would do is run away because he knew he was going to get a wallop, uh, a smack from, from his mother. Back then, it was kind of more acceptable than it is now. But anyway, so he would do his best to run away. And sometimes uh, what his mother would do is if she couldn't catch up fast enough and so on, she would grab something like a vase or, or, or something from around the house and she would literally hurl it at Trevor. So he talks about this uh, process of needing to avoid his mother's um, smacks. But first, before if his mother threw something at him, he would have to very quickly calculate in his head, like, okay, uh, if she throws that at me, I uh, might get into more trouble if I let it break. So number one, is it valuable? Okay, num- uh, it is valuable first. Catch it, put it down, and then run. If it's not valuable, then maximize the time and just keep running. <laughs> so his process of decision-making was very much around minimization of pain, <laughs> right? How do I minimize the pain that my mother is going to inflict on me, whether that's because of the broken vase or the thing that I've just done wrong? <laughs> the other way that we use to, maxim- uh, to, to make decisions is how can I get maximum gain? Is this going to make me happy? Is this going to give me some reward, something that is going to be important to me in right now um, or going to help me in the future? So maximizing benefits, minimizing pain is typically what we look through. But sometimes, even when we try to think through things like that, we realize that afterwards that we actually get things wrong. We do regret the decision that we make and we need to be careful to... Oh no. Maybe I shouldn't have put that vase right on the edge of the table. That was maybe a bad decision. Uh, Sorry, darling. Uh, I'll buy us a new one. (laughs) Actually, I'm going to tell you a story about a a decision that I made when I was at university. It wasn't very clever. Uh, Luckily, it didn't have lasting consequences, but the consequences did last a year or two. And that was that I went on a study break with a friend down to a a beach holiday. We were studying really hard uh, next to the beach. And we were both runners, cross trainers. And we went down to the beach for a run. And we had with us our slip slops, good old slip slops. But you don't want to run with slip slops. You definitely don't want to wear them and carrying them. So we, being creative people that we were, decided that we would be pirates. And we would bury our slip slops. So we dug a hole in the ground, buried them like buried treasure, and we would come back to them. But you know, tre- pirates never actually like mark the spot where the treasure is and say treasure here right they have to have a map as to how to get to it so we made a map like with ourselves of directions and steps so that when we came back we would be able to find the spot where we had buried our treasure our slip slops and what when we came back we kind of followed our map and there was just sand and we dug with our hands (laughs) we went back to the house and got spades and we dug a huge trench and we never found our slip slops. Perhaps that wasn't the wisest way to look after our stuff. And it meant that as I was walking around university for the next year or two, I never had slip slops because I just didn't have the money or, and I couldn't face the humiliation of having to replace my own slip slops. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Sometimes when we make bad decisions and so on, we think that it's going to end our world. And we'll talk a little bit about God's forgiveness in a moment. But sometimes when we're making decisions, we don't want it to go wrong, but we see how close to the edge we can make a decision, right? Now, if you guys look at YouTube ever, and I know you do, (laughs) it is full of people making bad decisions, right? I mean, all I have to say is like fail army. I'm pretty sure that you guys have got pictures, guys, I mean, skateboards. Am I right? I mean, it's, guys are just like, seem to do this all the time. They like want to go as close to the edge and often uh, smash into the edge. Uh, even girls and so on sometimes make bad decisions. Actually thinking about that now, 
Hayley, my daughter, was going to school today and she's telling me that she was giving a talk at school about uh, rebellion as students, how good it is, and about smoking weed. Hmm. Maybe I need to check up on about her life decisions. Only kidding. I'm, I'm quite comfortable that she won't be smoking anything quite soon. Anyway, moving on. So the, it's also very easy to identify bad decisions when we look at other people, right? My daughter, you know, me looking in on my daughter's life and wondering if she's going to make a bad decision. But sometimes when you are in that situation yourself, things are a little bit more fuzzy. It's like, you, you see the benefits, you see the potential dangers, but you still think that it feels like a good idea to move forward. So how do we make good decisions before we move into the situation, before it's too late, before we have regrets, like me with that vase? So if we look at the Bible, what it, uh, we read the passage from Ephesians. It was a long section. And in there, Paul is giving good advice to Christians. And there's, there's a list of obvious stuff. Did you notice in there there was some stuff that you shouldn't do? Mm, sexual immorality was in there. Hopefully we're not worrying about that too much yet. But there were other things in that list. You should go back and have a look at it. There was obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking. So if we're joking around in the schoolyard and making you know, coarse jokes about other people and being rude, actually the Bible says that we shouldn't do that as Christians. Hmm. So there are some things that are right and wrong, some guidance that the Bible gives us. And as we train ourselves and read our Bible more, we will get to know those things more and live more in line with the way God wants us to. But did you notice at the end and so on, it gets to a point where even that doesn't go far enough to help us, to, to help us decide how to make decisions. In verse 15, did you notice verse 15? And I think um, Ansane has spoken about this verse before, a week or two ago. It says, be very careful how you live. Okay, I must wait and be careful how I live, not as unwise, but as wise. And that is saying that not everything is about whether it's right or wrong, whether it's permissible, whether I'll get into trouble for it to minimize pain, but sometimes whether it's wise or not. And this is what I want to share with you. My rule of life, or a rule of life, that I learned a while ago when doing a study in our community group, which I have applied in my own life and find really valuable. It was a talk by Andy Stanley, a course actually that I did, and it looked at the, the most important question in life. And that was this saying that hopefully you can see somewhere behind me. If we can stop before every decision and ask this question, in the light of my past experiences, okay, what I know about what's gone on before, my present circumstances, how things are happening right now, and my future hopes and dreams, what is the wise thing to do? Let me just say that again. What is the wise thing to do? And I have just memorized that phrase and so often apply it in my own life, just when I'm making decisions, just to stop and think about whether this decision would be wise, whether it will help me to move forward, whether it's a good time for me to do this or not a good time to understand myself, my circumstances, and the potential outcomes. This gives us a really helpful guide. And God says that He gives us His Holy Spirit to help us to grow in wisdom. So just in closing, just the one thing that I want you to remember is just this one question, is what is the wise thing to do? Remember that God doesn't expect us to be wise overnight, to move from uh, you know, a foolish person to a wise person. He wants to work with us and He gives us His Holy Spirit to do that. He is shaping our will as we go through our life by working more with Him and training in this discipline, the discipline of how to make good decisions, as well as the other ones that we've spoken about and so on, He will shape our will and help us to grow in wisdom. Remember also that God is forgiving. If we make mistakes, it's not too late. We can come to Him at any stage and He will forgive us. Remember, I read a book recently that was really useful to me. It said that God is interested in our character, not necessarily the outcomes or what it is that we do. God is interested in our character. So while we are still alive, it's never too late for His purposes 
for us. So my recommendation to you as you sit there is perhaps there's been an area that you've been thinking about as I've been talking, thinking, mm, I'm not too sure what to do in that situation or maybe I'm not very wise in terms of how I live my life in this regard. My recommendation is you to take one step today. Take a small decision that is a wise decision to move you towards a better way to do things or in terms of that decision. Let me pray for us as we close off. Lord God, thank you that you want to work with us in terms of the decisions that we make in life. And as we move forward, you want to bless us and give us a good life. In fact, you call it a good and perfect plan for our lives. And I pray for the kids watching this, that they would indeed experience your help as they make decisions in their lives, that they may be able to look back in years to come and say, thank you, God, for helping me to be wise in the decisions that I've made. May we continue to grow in our relationship with you, to live in a way that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. We can't wait to see you again next week. But until then, have a great week and goodbye. Thank you.